what the world actually values and rewards is experience and competence. Because if you think about it, a lot of people are really smart, but they actually don't amount to much. And that's probably the way that you feel right now. Something to keep in mind is that uh, just because I'm on YouTube and I have a camera and I can record myself, that doesn't make me the uh, expert on anything. It doesn't make me the authority on anything. And so if you disagree with anything that I'm saying and you know for a fact that I am wrong or even just your opinion is different than mine, feel free to share it. Uh, uh, there's no offense here at all. With that, um, let's get on to today's topic, which is why does it seem like some intelligent people aren't as successful as others? And why is it that people who have lower IQs than them seem to perform, uh, are more successful in the, um, how would you say, how society would view success? Understanding why is it that smarter people are more likely to be depressed? So there's a, a series of trials that really look at something called insight, which is your awareness of what your problems are. So what they sort of discovered is that if you have a debilitating neurological disease, like let's say you've got like ALS, right, which is Lou Gehrig's disease, or um, it's like a degenerative nerve disorder, if you've got Parkinson's or something like that, if you get diagnosed with something that's like really bad, like cancer, the awareness that you have, your ability to analyze and accurately assess your situation correlates with suicidality. So the greater your insight is, the more aware you are, the more suicidal you are. There are also situations where they've looked at diseases like schizophrenia, and they've also found that like when you have people with schizophrenia, the more aware of the problem they are, the more damaging the situation actually is and the more suicidal they become. So that sounds kind of weird, but like let's kind of dive into a little bit of like why is that? Why is it that IQ can worsen depression? I'm going to stop it right there because I think this gets really close to kind of where I'm at with this topic. I think that... And we'll see where it goes with it. But I think that really high IQ people, and I've been around a lot of really high IQ people. When I graduated from high school, I immediately started working at different architecture firms and way, way above my pay grade. These, all, all these people here were uh, way smarter than me, all college master's degrees, uh, dealing with engineers, architects. And then after that, I worked with senior software engineers as a second career. So I've, I've been around really high IQ people, people that um, just are on a completely different level than I will ever be on. Now, the exception there is that they were all very successful. However, whenever we'd be discussing a new feature or a new, uh, like redoing a design on a particular property, like if we were going to change the whole front, the thing is, is they would get caught up in the details of how that would get done and they would be discouraged by it. They say, oh, we'd have to do this and this and this. Now, that is not a bad thing. But what happens is, is they realize the work ahead. They see that, oh, in order to do this, in order to make this change, I'm going to have to make these changes. And that's going to take way more work than you think it is. If you are in a position of like, I mean, this is kind of the clash between like the CTO and and the engineers and say like the marketing department, for instance, it's like, can you implement this feature? And it's like, no, we can't. This is going to take us weeks. And you think, well, it's just this small, tiny little thing. And it's because they have an awareness of all the particular intricacies in order to get that job done. So think about this. A lot of really high IQ people aren't very uh, entrepreneurial. And I think the reason is, is because if you look at the stats, most businesses fail. Most business owners will tell you if they knew everything that they know now, they would have never started the business. They, if they realized it was going to be as hard as it was, if, if it was going to be as painful as it was, they would never have gotten into the business to begin with. And it happens all the time. I hear this message all the time with other business owners. And so I really think that this applies not just to uh, knowing like your situation as far as if you have an illness and, and causing you to be more depressed, but let's say like you need to get a girlfriend and um, you think about all the different things that you would need to do in order to get the type of girl that you're looking for. It's like, okay, I need to get in shape. I need to have a certain amount of income. I need to be moved out of my parents' house. I need to uh, have my own car. I need to uh, have really nice clothes and know how to dress properly. And what happens is, is you can almost talk yourself out of just taking that first step and working towards those things. 
when I was a kid in Queens and I had no money and I had nothing and I needed to save myself, the way I got out was by sounding smart, not being smart, sounding mm. smart. That was the skill I perfected. So I am hardwired to always rehearse things so I will sound smart. It's a disease. It keeps me from being happy. So, but when you see that, when you realize that, when you understand something, then it naturally calms you down. So after that, I stopped rehearsing as much. Wow. But it's still a trained habit. That, that is a really interesting point that you want to sound smart, that, that many people do that, and especially young people. When you, you, you see someone who is smart or someone who appears smart, they say smart things. Right. You go, God, I want to sound smart. I want people to think about me the same way I think about that person. That, that is my disease. That is my feeling. It is what yeah. clutters my mind. I, I, the, the, the thing I have to ask myself now is if I can – would I still be interested in learning this thing if I couldn't ever tell anybody about it? Ah. That's how I know it's real. That's how I know it's something I actually want to know. That's a common thing, though. I, I know I suffered from that when I was young, the desire to sound smart. That's, it's, very, it's very common. Well, all of us start out, you know, every, everything you're a winner now in your life you were to you it's because you were a loser at some point right if if you had gotten all the girls if you had all the money if you had everything you want you were good looking in in junior high or high school uh you wouldn't have done anything with your life mm -hmm. and you would have peaked early it's like the bruce springsteen glory days song right you would have married yeah. your high school sweetheart you'd be living in your hometown you know you'd be a manager at the local mcdonald's whatever the first <laughs> dream job you had thank god we didn't all get what we wanted when we were young right, <laughs> right? or we would be trapped in that so you you have to be able to break out of where you came from that's a that's a good point there's that cliche of the quarterback and the the cheerleader the homecoming queen or whatever that end up becoming uh losers later in life but it's also true with people who are uh considered high iq and they're super smart and nerdy it's like it's less of a cliche it's not talked about in popular culture as far as movies but i know plenty of people from my high school who were the geeks and nerds and they've done nothing with their life and then there's others that were geeks and nerds and they've done great things with their life a study out of sweden found that the top earners have lower intelligence than the people in income levels directly below them the plateauing of cognitive ability among top earners drew on data from 59,000 men who had to take a compulsory military conscription aptitude test it then tracked their earnings over their professional careers to find the relationship between intelligence and income. Oh, wait, this is interesting. And before Ty Lopez gets any ideas for more shitty YouTube commercials or the Hustle Bros learn how to read journal articles and use this to encourage people to drop out of college, I want you to know how this data really works. The relationship between intelligence and income was strong. Smarter people earn more money, but only up to 670,000 Swedish krona, or $64,000 per year. After that, intelligence didn't mean much anymore, and at the very top end of income earners, the 1%, dumber people, actually did better. So I would say that this is probably due to assets being the main driver of wealth once you get past that 650k let's say you're a neurosurgeon or something, once you're past that mark and you're making the millions of dollars, really the way that you're going to uh, get more than a million dollars a year is by owning assets, having a business, having stocks. These are all things where the barrier of entry on the IQ side is much lower than say becoming a software engineer. Reason number one why dumb people are doing better than smart people is that smart people fill in high prestige jobs that don't have high salaries. Academics and research scientists are some of the smartest people in the world, but they don't get paid well. Doctors, lawyers, and elite financiers also need to be very smart to get through demanding schooling and admissions exams. And these professionals are typically compensated very competitively, but most of them don't make it all the way to the 1%. In the USA, to be in the top 1% of income earners, an individual needs to make at least $597,000 before tax, and that's just the minimum to join the 1% club. The average member of the 1% earns $1.4 million before tax. 
Some senior executives, certain doctors, lawyers, and even bankers can earn this much money, but they are in the minority. Highly intelligent people that follow well-compensated career paths are less likely to make the transition to business ownership because they will reach a level of income that they are satisfied with and won't want to take the risky step of giving up their well-paid job to start a business that might not even succeed. Moderately intelligent people with desire for high incomes, on the other hand, won't have as many opportunities to make incomes in the top percentiles unless they go into business for themselves. So they are on average more willing to take the risk because they won't be giving up a career that was difficult to get into and equally difficult to get back into. A person of average intelligence starting a business for themselves is statistically very likely to fail and end up in the lower end of the income range. At that point, they can either try and start another business or go back to a regular job. If they are successful though, a business doesn't need to get that large before it can generate enough profit to put the owner in the top 1% of earners. A highly intelligent person starting a business will have slightly better odds of being successful, but statistically it's still likely to fail. Because there are less highly intelligent people than there are people of average intelligence, there are going to be more successful businesses run by average people than run by intelligent people, and if you remember, highly intelligent people already earning good money in a position as an employee are less likely to start a business of their own in the first place. They're even less likely to end up as a successful or unsuccessful business owner. There will also be many more business failures owned by people of average intelligence, but because only the businesses that survive get counted in the 1% of income earners, it changes the expectation that the best way to get rich is to be a business owner of average intelligence. The second problem with interpreting this study and all of the other studies you hear about is that the traits of wealthy people goes well beyond just statistics. To begin with, this study was conducted on men only. Men have different career earnings and work in different vocations than women, so the results could be very different if the other half of the population was included. Does that make sense? You see, you see the difference? Measuring intelligence is very difficult, and a military entrance exam is more likely to be focused on the type of intelligence that would make people good at following orders like comprehension, rather than free thinking and creative intelligence that would provide a competitive advantage in the boardroom, but not on the battlefield. Some people get a high income not because of luck, intelligence, or hard work. They get it because they are a Nepo baby and have family connections which can land them a job that pays well. As unfair as it may be to someone without these advantages, giving rich kids with connections jobs can be worth it if they keep using their connections to bring in more business. Some of these privileged individuals will be smart, some of them not so smart, but they won't need to be as intelligent as a top doctor to earn their money so they will bring down the average of the percentile they land in. So before that you think that this whole investigation was just a big waste of time, and that it doesn't reveal the secret to becoming a member of the 1%, you should know that it actually does. Let me show you how. There are some factors that can put dumb people in the 1% that you can't control. You don't get to choose if you are born to a wealthy family that can get you a fancy job by calling in a few favors. Like, um, a little hundred mil. A little hundred mil. You can also only do so much to control whether your business is highly successful, just breaking even or a complete failure. A lot of it is just luck. You know what, who gives a shit? But here is something else. You can't 100% control how intelligent you are either. You can practice certain skills, learn new things, but some people will be able to absorb and apply knowledge better than others. You can't copy traits and expect a similar outcome. You have to be able to critically assess your strengths and weaknesses and choose a career path that suits you best. Rich people eat a lot of caviar and fly first class, but flying first class and eating caviar won't make you rich, just like being of average intelligence won't make you a member of the 1% by itself. The first real step is to work out what you are good at and what you are bad at. This may involve admitting to yourself that you are not as smart as you think you are. It might hurt your ego, but being honest with yourself about your weaknesses will bring you much further than believing you're good at things that you're not. Highly competitive industries reward high performers, but they are also equally punishing underperformers. Becoming a doctor will almost guarantee an upper middle class or upper class income for the rest of your working life, but failing out of med school will leave you with hundreds of thousands of dollars of student loans that will put you far behind people who are more realistic with their career ambitions. An electrician that does the best work in their area and has a good reputation with builders and businesses will make more money than a lawyer that is average or below average. That doesn't mean drop out of college. It means be honest with yourself about what marketable field you could excel in and do that instead of trying to chase career paths that just have a reputation for earning a lot of money because if you do, you might end up like the people that rushed into tech jobs to chase big paychecks just before the biggest companies in the space announced record layoffs. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. If you like this video, please like this video. If there's anything that you agree with or disagree with or you want to add your input, go ahead and put that down below in the comments. I look forward to hearing what your thoughts are, and I will see you guys in the next one. I am Jake Day. Peace.